Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. And it is a very special day because happy, happy Zelda Day. Tears of the Kingdom is finally here. I was actually playing it this morning, and oh, it is so, so good. Uh, th th this weekend's going to be a lot of fun. But before all that, we do have some stuff to talk about today. Nintendo has started to open up a little bit about some of their upcoming plans to lead into their next generation platform, whatever that may be. Well, it's actually starting to sound like it's going to be a while before we officially see it ourselves. So we're going to get into all that today, as well as reportedly PlayStation canceling a AAA shooter. As always, though, do hit those buttons below, like, subscribe, and whack that bell as hard as you possibly can. That way you'll always have your daily gaming news. Welcome to the News Dose. With that said, let's just go and jump right into it, starting off with Call of Duty. This is the first time we've talked about Call of Duty outside of the acquisition in quite some time, but we did get an update for this year's annual release. Yep, that's right, there for a while there was some speculation that they would skip out on a full-fledged 2023 title for the first time in well over a decade, and would instead opt out in some sort of quote-unquote premium DLC. However, it seems like Activision said no, to that plan after all. You can see here reported by Insider Gaming, it says, Insider Gaming sources have revealed that this year's Call of Duty title would be called Modern Warfare 3. The title is in development by Sledgehammer Games via Jason Schreier, but it's understood to be supported by various other Call of Duty studios just like its predecessors. It then goes on to say Modern Warfare 3 will feature campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and a new Warzone 2 map during the title's first season. So quite the turnaround if those rumors were true about it originally being planned as a premium DLC, but all in all, I mean, Activision is like all of their studios working on Call of Duty in at least some capacity, so they have the resources. It makes them bukus of money, you know, so they also have the inspiration. If you are a Call of Duty fan, however, and if you like those annual releases, well, 2023 will be no different, and they will once again deliver according to this report. Now, Insider Gaming also posted some key dates, which you can see here. This includes dates for its beta weekends, the campaign's early access, its full release, which again is planned for its usual November month, this time being the 10th, and then its Season 1 and Warzone launch, which is one month later in December. So, Insider Gaming and Tom Henderson got a major scoop here with some very specific details. Now, speaking of that November month, though, we also got an update for Hogwarts Legacy on the Nintendo Switch. Obviously, this has been a massively successful release. It probably will be one of, if not the biggest release of 2023, but it is, however, still missing that mysterious Switch version. Now, there's still some major questions on how this game will actually perform on the Switch. That remains to be seen. The developers are going to have to be wizards themselves here. But for the time being, they have once again delayed its release date to now November 14th. It was initially planned to release on July 25th, so they are pushing it back quite significantly. But they are doing their due diligence here to make sure this release comes out with the utmost quality. Warner Brothers Games did previously note that they view the Switch version as a more important release than the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 version. One reason for that is due to the popularity of the Switch specifically over in Japan, where Harry Potter also has a rather large fan base. I, I think that's actually a good point made, and for that matter, just kind of knowing the Switch has sold like, you know, 120 plus million consoles worldwide, there's certainly going to be a fan base there that you're not going to see on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, where a large part of those communities have kind of moved on over to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. So we could ultimately see another sizable jump in Hogwarts Legacy units sold when it eventually releases on the Switch later this year, now again being November 14th. If anything else though, I, I think with such a staggered release like this, that kind of bodes well with how serious they're taking its release and that they are trying their best to ensure it will have a quality launch. Of course, we'll still need to see the final product, but I'd rather them take their time than just, you know, launch a mess of a game. And there's already some pretty major questions with this release anyways. Now, if we are talking about the power of the Switch, though, of course, there's those rumors out there regarding the Nintendo Switch successor. And I know it feels like it's just been such a long wait for this thing, but we are drawing closer to this thing becoming a reality. But when is probably the biggest question. I, I think based on the information that we have currently, it's probably planned for 2024. But even with that, there's still the question of will it release early in the year, similar to what happened with the Switch. In fact, there's speculation that Nintendo could even announce this console as early as this year, 
and then release it in the first half of 2024. Well, Nintendo has kind of opened up about this situation and whether or not an early announcement makes sense for their next platform. This was during an investor's Q&A where it was brought up that Nintendo announced the Switch, or at the time, the NX back in 2015, two years before the Switch's official launch. And this is how Nintendo responded. Looking back at the release of information leading up to the Nintendo Switch launch, we announced the NX development code name in March 2015 during a joint announcement with DNA regarding our business and capital alliance. When we announced our entry into the mobile business at the time, we needed to let people know that Nintendo would be continuing to focus on the dedicated video game platform business as our core business. So I believe that the timing of the Nintendo Switch announcement was a special case. And it's those last two words there that are so telling. It was a quote-unquote special case. And why was that? It simply comes down to the fact that the Wii U was an abysmal failure for Nintendo. There was absolutely no momentum to kill in 2015 by announcing a new platform early on. Rather, it was viewed as reassuring to both investors and fans alike because at the time, there was some concern that they could maybe exit the console business, especially if they announced mobile games as they allude to here. That would have only added to that concern. They needed to let people know consoles are absolutely in their future despite some of the recent mistakes that they made with the Wii U. With the Switch and its successor though, this is a completely different story. The Switch, while yes, has slowed down here recently, it's no longer in its peak years, that's for sure, but it is still selling very well. They're shooting for 15 million sold this fiscal year, which is still very good. I mean, just to kind of put things into perspective and how different these situations are, that's more units sold than the Wii U sold lifetime. The Wii U only sold 13.56 million units, so even in a slower year for the Switch, they are still aiming to sell more than the Wii U lifetime. Again, the Wii U was a massive failure for Nintendo. So, it's just a completely, completely different situation. Nintendo right now is trying to kind of balance a successful console with the timing of its successor's announcement. So, I, I think with this news here, and the way Nintendo responded, it more so ensures that they're probably going to have a short lead up between the Switch's successor's announcement and then its release date. With that, I'm thinking they'll probably give the Switch some breathing room for this holiday and then announce the Switch 2 or whatever it's called sometime in 2024. Now, we'll still likely get some leaks throughout this year, and of course I'll keep you all updated with all that, but I don't think anything official is going to come out in 2023. As for the Nintendo Switch specifically though, they were also asked about whether or not they plan to cut its price to meet their 15 million goal for the fiscal year, and Nintendo responded by saying, With regard to hardware, prices for certain materials have fallen but overall costs remain high. We must also continue to account for the impact of factors such as inflation and foreign exchange rates. Production was highly impacted during the previous fiscal year, so we are ensuring our parts procurement occurs far enough in advance to ensure stable production. Even if raw material prices decrease, it will take time for this to be reflected in manufacturing costs. Currently, there are no plans to reduce the price of our hardware during the fiscal year. On the other hand, while we also have no plans to raise prices, the yen continues to be weak and procurement costs remain high, so we will continue to monitor the situation carefully. Now, to be fair, Nintendo is not going to announce a price cut at a Q&A like this. That would be bad for business because then everybody would just wait to buy a Switch until a price cut becomes official. So I'm not really sure why anybody would expect a different response other than this. But however, uh, this is still a pretty detailed answer to what's happening. The world is kind of in a weird place right now. Prices of everything are going up, not down. Games cost more. We saw that with Zelda being $70. Consoles like the PlayStation 5 has gone up in price as well. So I'm sure Nintendo has been impacted by some of the same issues. So while I don't take this as some kind of 100% confirmation per se, they did note that they'll monitor the situation, but at the same time, I wouldn't go in expecting a price cut anytime soon with everything that's going on, and which is also laid out here by Nintendo. 
Let's go talk about PlayStation now and this reportedly canceled AAA shooter. This is coming from Bogorad222 over on Twitter. He has a pretty decent track record unearthing different game related stuff and he claims that Sony has canceled an unannounced sci-fi shooter at Final Strike Games. The game was in development for three years, was two years away from shipping, and the platforms were PlayStation 5 and PC. He then revealed that his source was a developer who was laid off from the studio. The company had a 40% reduction of headcount due to this cancellation. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this is still an unconfirmed rumor, but I do believe that there's a few reasons that this could at least be plausible. He did apparently send the reply from the developer to Tom Henderson, which then reported on it over on Insider Gaming. So it's believable enough for Tom Henderson to report on it, which, I mean, he has a great track record. Another thing here, though, is that I think it would be very strange to make up something like this. Final Strike Games is not a studio that's on a lot of people's radar. If you don't know who they are, they released Rocket Arena back in 2016, and, and since then, they've supported Fortnite. As pointed out by Insider Gaming, though, according to their website, they are working on an unannounced AAA PvP shooter for console and PC. There's a good chance that this is the canceled game in question, which kind of lines up with what Bogo Rad is saying here. We also know for a fact that Sony has several live service games in development, so it fits in with that strategy. And I think all of this just kind of adds up when you piece it together. Why cancel this game, though, before it even had a chance? And I think that this kind of takes us back to what happened last week. Sony did also just shut down Pixel Opus, their internal studio behind Concrete Genie. Sony did later on issue a statement to IGN, which reads, PlayStation Studios regularly evaluates its portfolio and the status of studio projects to ensure they meet the organization's short and long-term strategic objectives. As part of our recent review process, it has been decided that Pixel Opus will close on June 2nd. So with that brought to light, it kind of sounds like Sony is doing a sweep across all their projects right now. They're evaluating their portfolio to see if they're worth the investment going forward. And sadly, it sounds like Pixel Opus and now Final Strike Games just did not reach their expectations. Now, as I was recording, we just got yet another update that Deviation Games, another Sony-supported studio, has now also been hit by major layoffs. This was reported by VGC, which was told that as many as 90 employees have been affected, which is a huge portion of the overall staff. Back in 2021, they were reportedly over 100 staff, but several employees here are already tweeting out about the layoffs. Now, if you don't know about this studio, they were formed by some Call of Duty veterans, and they previously announced a AAA live service game in partnership with Sony. Sony is the publisher here, and, and with that, there there's definitely going to be some questions on whether or not the game that they're working on together is even in development anymore. We'll need some further information there. This story is still kind of developing. Uh, with, with all the recent news, though, Pixel Opus being shut down, the final strike game cancellation, as we just talked about, and now Deviation Games being hit with a mass layoff, it definitely all seems kind of linked to Sony. Again, they might be doing some sweeping evaluations to see what's worth their investment but with that said anytime it comes to people losing their jobs my heart goes out to them and I wish them the absolute best going forward these are only some of the worst topics to talk about on the channel Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, where I asked you all, will you be disappointed if the Nintendo Switch successor launches with an LCD screen instead of an OLED? And as you can see here, the majority of you all absolutely will be disappointed with 65% of you saying yes, 16% of you then said no, and then 12% of you said it depends. And you can see here, the hope for an OLED is quite high. Screens are just so important when it comes to handhelds, and I think the Switch OLED really kind of shows us that. Just as an example here, if you compare the Steam Deck, a much more powerful machine than the Switch OLED, ironically, when playing a less demanding game, they do look better on the Switch OLED thanks to its superior display. So I myself do hope for an OLED with whatever Nintendo's working on next. Now, with that said, hypothetically, if they do go with an LCD, that's not necessarily the only important factor here. It is important to keep in mind that quality of displays do vary. So there are high quality LCDs as well. So with that in mind, it does kind of depend here. Even if they do have an LCD, it could still be good. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you all. I am crossing my fingers that they stick with an OLED, though it might kind of come down to price for, for Nintendo. Nintendo will want to keep its price down. And that's where they might choose an LCD to start the generation off with. I guess we'll see, though. Anyways, oh, that's it for this episode. But if you like the video, 
Don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.